Today we go to the beach. Welcome back to the Traveling Kunz YouTube channel. Today we're going to check out the best beaches in Kinmen and I'm going to kick things off right here at Ocho Beach. Kinmen was the last front line of the Chinese Civil War in 1949 and was not accessible for the public until 1995. The M18 tank you see witnessed years of strict martial law, including heavy artillery shelling on the island. But against all odds, this Taiwanese island, right in the front of China, turned into a beautiful vacation spot. So in this episode, I would like to show you my favorite beaches on the island and also tell you the story why the beaches of Kinmen are so special. Let us start with what people are actually doing here at the beach. They are trying to catch clams because there are so many of them over here. If they catch some clams, they either end up on the dinner table tonight or the people can sell them to a local restaurant. While the clams are mostly below the sand, on top you see a lot of crabs on this beach. And man, these crabs are really quick. Maybe look at this one in slow motion. Don't worry about the crabs, they will not hurt you. They are really just a proof of the excellent water quality at the south coast of Kinmen. You could swim here, but if you want to go for a swim, I recommend to go to Hohu Beach close by. This is probably the most famous beach in Kinmen. The beach in the south coast of Kinmen is very famous, especially for beach activities. And it's probably the busiest beach in this video. The it doesn't mean it's really busy though. This beach is great, it's really easy to access and there are great facilities. I'm gonna tell you more about the beach culture in a second, but before I want to show you some footage of the so-called blue diamonds. Because for me personally, that is the coolest thing in Kinmen at all. And I'm glad that I managed to see it. Blue tears or blue diamonds refer to a phenomenon caused by a special kind of plankton in the water. They emit a blue fluorescent light at night after being disturbed by waves or wind. You can sort of compare it to fireflies just in the water. You can only see the blue tears in the springtime and even then only under special conditions. Obviously it has to be dark but also the weather and the water temperature and all other things must be right. I saw the blue tears for the first time at the coast after being tipped off on Facebook. There are multiple groups around the blue tears. However, there's also special boat tours. I really recommend them, but you have to be spontaneous because seeing the blue tears cannot be planned or scheduled. And beside jumping on a boat at a pitch black night, there's a few other things that you have to consider. After all, you are in a Chinese Taiwanese border area. Thus, every passenger has to be registered and you have to check in and check out in the harbor. But as you see, you get a great view, you drive under the Kinmen Bridge, you see all the way to Xiamen and also over Kinmen, of course. Actually, I've never been this close to Xiamen before. But now let's go back to the beaches. I'm now at Xibian Beach, all the way in the northeast of Kinmen. It is around an hour cycle ride over here, but it's totally worth coming here. Just look at the color of that water and the natural sand. A special thing for almost all beaches in Kinmen is the fact that they are managed by the government. So they are all for free, you can bring your own drinks and you find really clean facilities. But there are very limited commercial activities on the beach. However, it is Taiwan after all and you have 24 hour convenience stores everywhere close by. And yes, of course they sell cold beer. I guess you could say Xibian Beach is the biggest lonely beach in the world because this place is super huge and still I'm the only person here. One thing is that there are not so many tourists that come to Kinmen in general. And for beach action, most Taiwanese people go to Kenting on the Taiwanese mainland. On top of that, the ferry coming from China is still not fully operational, which reduces the number of tourists coming from China as well. However, it is for sure not the weather, I think. It is springtime at the moment. We have like 25 degrees. It is fairly warm, I would say. It's nice to be at the beach. However, the beaches are still really empty. My personal experience is that the locals are not so crazy about going to the beach as well. However, that does not mean that you shouldn't bring your swimming gear. In fact, I really like the beaches and I really recommend coming here for a vacation. But let's move on so I can show you more reasons to come here. Fuo Gua Dun Guan Hai Tai in the south of Kinmen is also a place you totally should check out. The terrace marks the southern end of Kinmen. Besides the viewing platform, there's a few walking ways and you have many options to enjoy the view. The small island that you see is Bei Ding Dao. 
It also belongs to Kinmen, but is not accessible for tourists, because it's a military fortification. Now, I got one more beach on the south coast that I really would like to show you, so let us hit the road again. I made it to Changgong Beach, one of the biggest beaches in Kinmen. However, besides a nice sandy area, there's a lot more to discover over here, so let's check it out. In fact, I was already here before in the third episode, because this beach is right in front of the Cheng Ling Lan Western House. The beach is famous for the former underground command post that is now a famous tourist destination. Compared to the military tunnels that I have visited in the second episode of the Kinmen Travel Tales, this place is a bit smaller, nevertheless it is a well-equipped fort including howitzers, tanks and other military equipment that is here on display. I really like this place because you also find a public barbecue area right by the beach. Just bring what you want to drink and eat and enjoy. Now I did not mention any of the beaches on the north coast of Kinmen. They are a bit different but they are still very beautiful as you see. However, you only find natural beaches with very limited sand in this part of the island. Besides that, the water quality is also apparently a bit lower. The locals told me that the water is more polluted due to the waste coming from China. There isn't really any industry on Kinmen Island, but Xiamen in China is fairly industrial and there's more pollution coming from over there. And in case you wonder what these big ships are doing in the sea, they are sand harvesting. Let me explain. Now the biggest fan of Kinmen beaches is actually the Chinese government. because. They love the beaches so much, they decided to take the sand home. What you see behind me, all the way back there, is the new Xiamen airport that is built on an artificial island. The Kinmenese people are very convinced that the sand for this island was taken from Kinmen beaches. Many Kinmenese people have relatives in Xiamen, and the city seems so close, yet it is so different. But that is a topic for another day. Now it is time to wrap up the beach episode of the Kinmen Travel Tales. There are too many great beaches in Kinmen to mention them all in one episode. But I really hope that you like what you saw. In the next episode I will be going to Xiao Jinmen, so stay tuned. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching the beach episode of the Kinmen Travel Tales. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon. Bye! Thank you.